This is a Ferrari 355. Never mind the looks, never mind the pedigree, never mind the noise. Above all, it's a driver's car. It rewards skill and forgives stupidity like nothing else on the road. Nearly. You see, there's talk of a car which some say can drive the Ferrari into the ground. A car with four seats and a boot, and a car which, crucially, costs half as much. So far, about 30 people in Britain have bought one of these cars, and they're saying that they've discovered the motoring equivalent of the Holy Grail. I had a tremendous fun. I loved the car, and it was actually a sad day when I sold it. I've driven quite a number of fast cars, but this one, I suppose, for me, was the ultimate wolf in sheep's clothing. Tasteful-looking thing, isn't it? And just wait till you clock the badge. Yep, it's a Nissan. To be precise, the latest generation of Skyline GTR with the V-Spec race car suspension. So, a Nissan that can outrun a Ferrari. Hmm. I'd be more inclined to believe that Enid Blyton wrote Pulp Fiction. But this is the only road car ever to have lapped the fearsome Nürburgring in Germany in less than eight minutes. A remarkable feat, especially as its 2.6-litre engine, is nothing to write home about. Japanese law limits it to just 280 horsepower, but every single owner tweaks it up a bit. Give the aftermarket specialists 800 pounds and in return, they'll give you a more wholesome 390 horsepower. Some have been taken to a Formula One busting 800 horsepower. But do you know what the funny thing is? No matter how much power you put under the bonnet, the chassis can still take it. The chassis is what sets this car apart from everything else on the road. Long ago, the Japanese realized they didn't have the finesse to match European engineering. So, they've used technology instead. We've seen sophisticated four-wheel drive systems before, but nothing like this. It's got four-wheel steering, an active viscous differential, active torque split, and everything's monitored by an ESP3TG4 XT computer. I know that sounds like gobbledygook, but what it means is you take the motoring rulebook and throw it away. You see, in an ordinary car, when the back starts to slide, you have to lift off, but in this, you give it more welly, <laughs> and that sends the oomph up to the front wheels, dragging you out of the slide. So, just a dab of opposite lock, and away it goes. It's phenomenal. It's amazing. There's even a little dial down here telling you how much power is actually being sent to the front. But believe me, when that's happening, you haven't got time to look at a dial. It generates enormous G-forces. It's like a baby. All it can do is grip. That is what it was born to do. It was magnificent. Um, I, I can't actually remember such a, a good time that I've had in any other car. Um, I loved all the characteristics of it. I think I drove the car for around 40,000 miles and actually had no problems at all. So what he's saying is that it's a practical proposition too. Hmm. Little thought has been given to creature comforts. Yes, it's got air conditioning and a wireless, but the ride is bone-shakingly hard. The dash, even by Nissan's low, low standards, is plasticky and bland. The seats are velveteen and horrid. But everything is exactly where a keen driver wants it to be. And remember, it does have big back seats. You can in a Nissan. You want one, don't you? I want one too, and if we had 50 grand lying around, we could personally import one from Japan. But Nissan in Britain doesn't want to get involved. Have they gone stark staring mad?
As you know, it's a great driver's car, and I think it would be super to have it in the range, but the trouble is at the moment, Jeremy, it doesn't meet the legislation. It's a bit too noisy, we'd have to look at the emissions, we'd have to change some of the lights, and we'd have to do the, change the instruments as well. So that would cost about a million pounds, which is quite a lot of money for probably a small number of cars. No, it isn't. A million quid is chicken feed. They spend a damn sight more than that on stupid adverts for the Almira. This car is the best advert Nissan could wish for. At the moment, I have Nissan's clocked as pond life with all the visual impact of a chair. This could do for the whole range what the T5 did for Volvo. Nissan desperately needs the skyline. And we need this car because it's like a wheeled roller coaster. It is nothing short of phenomenal. So, best driver's car in the world ever? Well, I'm a huge fan of the 355, but even I'll admit it's close. It's really, really close.